What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and uh, I am going to talk about in this video my research around traffic which is the edge router or the reverse proxy in simple. I talk about backend engineering on this channel so I love proxies. I talk about proxies all the time. I try to uh, discuss as many proxies and, or, or web servers and, and kind of make a lengthy topic about them. I, did, I made one on Nginx, I made one on, on, on HA proxy, and I made one on Caddy, not as detailed, just, just the web server side of it. Uh, but uh, I want to pick up at all the reverse proxies that are available and then just research them and, and give my personal opinion and traffic is no different okay uh i'm ready to make that video i think it's gonna come out in the next uh, week or two weeks or three weeks uh, i'm just compiling a few notes but i want just to talk about i had to make this video to talk about how absolutely difficult was it to to make this video compared to other technologies like yeah like at nginx or ha proxy and uh, i want to talk about that process a little bit right so traffic is it's, it's branded as an edge router which is designed for kubernetes and and and, and uh, orchestrator container orchestration systems as the ingress that the one the proxy that receives the stuff and then distribute everything else to the services right and based on that it has went a route a route it was when it went into a route where it was it had a lot of abstraction injected into the software which i personally believe created a huge steep understanding uh, curve personally for me right compared to other proxies or other web servers or other reverse proxies or whatever you want to call it that are out of the market and uh, traffic has so many abstraction and i totally understand the purpose and the need of these abstractions and i'm going to talk about without where are these in a minute right it is clearly designed to to work with as much stuff out there as possible. It was designed to work as seamlessly within with Kubernetes. It wanted, it wanted to design to work quickly with Docker Swarm or other container orchestrator or other systems, right? It was it was built in this. And you want if you want to build a system that integrates with so many other systems, you have to make it generic enough you have to make it abstract enough and and we've done this many many times past in the years this is not something new uh, this is concept of abstraction and this is a, a basic principle and object oriented back in the 90s when we used to write software we all say a, a good design pattern is to code or design for an abstraction not a concrete concept so you always build these uh, instead of building one functionality you just abstract it away right this is not a cat this is not a dog it's an animal this is not this is not a mallard or a duck it's a bird are they bird i guess they're both are bird. so abstraction and that's what I notice with that's the goal of 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 traffic. And as a result, you end up seeing so many of these abstractions. And I have my beef with these abstractions, just like I did with RabbitMQ, guys. You know that, right? Some people don't like, some people find it easy. I personally do. Some some people agree with me, some people disagree with me. That's fine. I think it's a personal thing. But I'm just giving my opinion, so no hard feelings, right? Just, just, just we're discussing, right? There are strength points, but that's my problem with this. And here, are few of just a few of these abstractions for traffic. Remember, this is a reverse 
proxy. And we know what a reverse proxy does. It just forwards the traffic, right? Yeah, if it's a layer seven reverse proxy, which is, which this is, I believe, and it's, it's not a layer four reverse proxy. So it needs to look at the content and it makes decisions and you write rules. We know what a reverse proxy is. But look at how much stuff this is, the traffic. There is the concept. First one is start with the configuration. There are two types of configuration. Here's the, the split of mine, right? Static versus dynamic configuration, right? And at first, you, person who built, who, who, who deals with proxies, you know that, oh, okay, I know, I understand why they separated the two because the static configuration doesn't change, right? While dynamic configuration is now, uh, is now periodically being refreshed, whether this is from, it depends on the provider, that's another concept that we're gonna talk about, which is this is a file, this is a Docker, this is Kubernetes, uh, it's CD or wh whatever, right? They automatically refresh the dynamic configuration in order to keep the application always running, all right? If you wanna add a new server, you don't need to shut down the server and, and restart it to pick up the new config, just like we do with HAProxy. Uh, HAProxy fixed that. Or even with Nginx, Nginx fixed that differently. Uh, HAProxy solves that differently, right? It stops accepting uh, requests until it starts loading the new processes, right? Uh, and, and the new process will pick up the new configuration. So that they solve this problem. It's like, you know what? We're going to split the two. Okay. I like that. I love it, actually. All right. But that created now two places. Where do you start? Do you start with the static or do you start with the dynamic? So it's not clear from the documentation. To be honest, every time I go to the doc, I get lost. I go to the doc, I start reading, I was like, where the heck should I start? And and once I pick up, it's not as bad. I start reading and I start, okay, I understand, I understand, I understand. But I go out and come back after an hour, I'm completely lost. I have to start over all over again, all over again, every single time with traffic. Never happened with Nginx, never happened with Aproxy, Definitely never happened with Caddy, right? Although you can argue that Caddy is not just uh, a proxy; it's also a web server. But simple, and I give uh, I give Caddy a lot of grief too, <laughs> because of this duality. It's like, oh, you're trying to be a web server and a proxy. I I believe a proxy should be only a proxy, and I, I think traffic is doing good job here. But they would just over the board with all this abstraction. So yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is the provider concept. So there is a provider that is Kubernetes. There is a provider called Docker. There is a provider that the, uh, I don't even know the list of all of provider. And one beautiful provider that I care about for my use case is the file, is the manual configuration. That's what exactly I care about. I don't care about any other stuff, right? And maybe it's all for someone who's expert in Kubernetes which I am not, I'm not expert in anything. I don't like to call my ex myself expert in anything. I don't think anyone is expert, to be honest, if you think about it, right? The CEO of Google just said that, by the way, there, is no, there are no tech experts anymore. <laughs> so think about it, right? If I go and I wanna read about the file provider, okay, I'm interested in that, then you have to specify the static and the dynamic, and then you have to start with the static, but they don't, they didn't tell you that. And the static, references the dynamic configuration. So now you have to maintain two files for some reason. All right, okay, no problem, no problem, okay. I'm ready, I'm ready, what should I do? Entry point, that's the second, third abstraction. Entry point is, is like a front end in Nginx, in, in, in HA proxy, and it's like, what's it called in Nginx, I forgot. It's, it's just uh, the server uh, directive, I believe. I believe, yeah. So yeah, that's, I didn't take me much to understand. I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. Entry point, all right, that's good. But now, where do you put the entry point? Is it in the static? Or the, that's the problem of separating two things. Now you have to remember, oh, should I put it here or should I put it here? Should I put this in the static? Or should, and you have to remember, and the moment you start remembering, 
slows you down because you shouldn't start you shouldn't be remembering stuff when you're configuring a proxy right you have to know this stuff and some people will say saying you're just over complicating things you're gonna deploy the whole thing and just copy and paste the configuration and run it i am against that stuff i do not like to put a single line of config in my application that i do not understand you might disagree with that i'm absolutely fine but i don't i like to understand every single thing that goes into my config that goes into my application and sres will agree with that as well <laughs> in general so yeah i like to understand that stuff so i don't like to copy and paste and i don't tell anyone to copy and paste code or copy and paste config at all understand what's going on because guess what if it broke who's gonna fix it nobody's gonna fix it you have to fix it so you gotta understand what's going on right that's why you have to understand this stuff so understanding is very critical thing and i'm sorry i'm a little bit animated because i'm just frustrated of reading the doc and going back and then reading the doc again i just uh, lost again so i have to keep my own notes so hopefully i'm gonna make the video and it's gonna be be all awesome who knows right so yeah so that's it i don't know entry points where do, where do i put it and there's okay entry point is listening on a port so that's not changing as often so i'm gonna put in the static so that's how i start remembering okay put in the static and now the dynamic portion contains the rest of the stuff what are the rest of the stuff well if you think about it what what word remains well there is my front end let me define my back ends nope <laughs> it's not as easy let's make it a little bit hard on you nope you cannot define just just the back ends what is the back end there's no back end it's called a service but guess what the service cannot connect directly to the endpoint they put three stuff in the middle there is the concept of a router there is the concept of a middleware and there is a concept of rules in the middle between the service and the entry point and for kubernetes experts out there this might be terminology that you are already uh, familiar with i'm not a kubernetes expert i never used kubernetes before but i i use proxies a lot and this is just too way too much i don't know about you guys i find it so complex i'm gonna mention that in the video obviously guys and you have to choose you choose what you want right there is an option in in traffic to auto detect services and auto scale and auto do everything which i don't know about that man i would not enable that feature basically because i'd like to know exactly what's going on in my application i want to know understand how is it actually picking up services right unless i maybe if i fully understand how it works maybe i'll enable it but yeah so the idea of routers i mean i'm not gonna obviously explain the whole traffic system in this video but essentially the idea of of routers is the is a connector between an endpoint to to the to the service and the router itself i don't know if it's optional or not but the router had a set of rules that says okay if at least one rule if the host is i don't know if a slash pictures go to this service if a slash uh comments go to this service right like you're building instagram endpoints and you want to funnel the traffic that's, that's an ingress how that's how it does right that's how it works but this is all what i wanted to do all i wanted to do is build a lo load reverse proxy a load balancer that just funnel between three services that's all i want to do and it's so complex and again anything i said in this video could be just me it could be uh the case the use case i'm trying to do is just doesn't fit for traffic right it could be just other 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 use cases that are much simpler to do so the more com the more configuration you add it's just it becomes harder to read and it becomes harder to understand and they're using this toml thing t-o-m-l which i don't understand i don't even understand yaml i barely got into yaml i'm i'm familiar with the good old json 
or any stuff. I mean, yeah, boomer like that. What should I do? Right? So tumul, tumul is the thing. And I don't like it, so I, I, I'm, I'm stuck to YAML. I, I, I like to read YAML. It's just more readable for me. But alright, guys. So that's uh, that's my thoughts on Tomo. Uh, Tomo. That's my thought on on traffic so far. I think I'm ready to make the video. It's gonna come out very soon once I just uh, get some time the weekend uh, to start recording the video. Just compiling all the information I know. It's gonna be around an hour, an hour and a half video, talking about all these concepts. Obviously, the pros and cons. That based on my opinion. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Very quick video talking about traffic and the progress of me researching this technology. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.